Hey guys, it's me, Meat Eater, and here we're going to be doing the arena from Revenge of Dreamland. While extra mode and the true arena are not finished yet in Shay's mod, make no mistake, clearing the arena is no easy feat whatsoever. It takes a lot of precision and memorization to master. So starting off, I decided to start off with the Sphere Doomers. I reset multiple times to start with them first because they are by far the most annoying. Starting out with fire. He's going to launch out little fireballs at you from the beginning. Just stay over in the corner and hit him twice that way, and then he's going to launch him out again. You can either hit him right there in that corner, or you can wait for him to just dive in at you from the side, and then he's going to come back down there and slide right towards you. That's another good opportunity to hit him. But at that point, he's going to be launching off these little fireballs here, just dropping them when you grab the first one, hit the second one there so it doesn't ca cause a firewall at the bottom, and then you can just go ahead and stay underneath because he's going to charge you with fire. Afterwards, once he comes back, as you can tell, there's a huge splash damage attack right there you want to stay away from. In the meantime, you want to hit him with this, and he's going to keep on launching these little spheres at you, constantly inhale them, shoot him back. One more hit, and he should go into, yep, there he is, phase two, where he starts launching out fire, sort of like Miracle Matter. Now, the range of that is very sketchy, for example. You'll see how wide the fire bars are at the end. That hit range, a hitbox, does that is that wide at all stages of it, even if it's very low and very small in the beginning. Do not judge the appearance of the fire as its hitbox. That is false and misleading, and it could lead to a lot of problems. Better idea, just don't stay at any corners for a second phase period. Because if you stay in a corner and you inhale something, you could very well start charging in fire like that, and if you realize he's about to do that and you have something in your mouth, it's too late, you're already done for. When he charges at you like that, that's a good time to hit him. But like I said, just watch out and try not to inhale too much or be too risky because he tends to launch his attacks very, very quickly. And that little range of well, that little fire bar, that little fire surrounding shield, that's also a pretty wide hitbox, so be careful for that as well. There should be it right here. And then we're owing over, of course it's not done yet, we have two Sphere Doomers. The regular Sphere Doomer and the Spark Sphere Doomer. Stay over at the right, and if you see the Spark Doomer land right there, you know you did it right, you can stay in this corner, and they will never really attack the corner. You can stay here the entire time, keep on inhaling these little spheres here, and try hitting them both at the same time at once. Perfect. There's only one opportunity, there are a couple opportunities you need to watch out for, like there, right after you hit, you want to duck, and it kind of avoids damage. Just stay over there. Now, if, if the Spark Sphere Doomer at the very beginning shocks the very left of the stage, do not stay in the left corner, you actually want to stay at the right side of the corner, because they do the same thing like they're doing here, but the opposite end. That little electric attack with the beam at the end, you want to be careful of that, that's the one you want to jump over. And sometimes you'll also see this Spark Sphere Doomer shoot Sphere Balls at you, kind of like the Plasma Cannon. If you see that happening over on the right side towards you, well, you want to avoid that. But, as you can tell, I took out both at the same time. Now, if you want to see the full textbook definition of what a Psych Out is, this is most definitely it. After taking no damage from the first two forms, I was excited. But as soon as I launched that, instead of jumping up first, that's it. I messed up my run completely. I missed a hit. And therefore, at this point, when I inhale here at the side, he's going to come back down. Then you want to jump up because he's slide over to the corner. Then he's going to come back around and start shooting these little balls here. Back and forth, back and forth. And then you want to stay here and start inhaling. Because he's going to go ahead and swoop down, then he's going to do that little shock attack, kind of like that fire doomer, but the ice form of that instead. Normally, at this point, with this hit here, he would be in phase two. And... Well, I forgot that, and I went over to the opposite side of where he is. Once he's at half health, he's still a laser beam. I should have gotten close to him first, but I didn't. So, already down to half health because of my lack of mistakes. At this point, if you see my other run, my first run of this, I can pretty much do Ice Sphere Doom without taking pretty much any damage at all. Pretty much no Ice Sphere Doom like the back of my hand, and here, I was also not close enough to that Sphere Ball to, to, to take it or inhale it. So once again, taking a lot of damage. When I could have possibly done this no damage, that Psych Out definitely messed with me quite a bit. But overall, it doesn't really matter as long as I manage to take him out, and I do. So there's that. That is by far the most annoying part, and finishing off the Sphere Doomers, we have the Grand Doomer. 
who is a grand disappointment just like it was in the original game. I'm not going to rant about it nearly as much in this game as I did in my original run of this 10 years ago, but honestly the complaints are all pretty much the same. Just stay in this corner, you're safe for 95% of the attacks and that's it. You can super heal everything here, once again just stay in this corner. Don't shoot it back yet. He's gonna go into a little black hole thing, keep on jumping over it, jumping back and forth, and then run because it shocks you immediately after. So you wanna make sure you're moving, otherwise you're gonna get shocked right, where it, right after it comes out and it spawns towards you. Bad idea. At this point, just wait for it again, and then you'll see it teleport out of that second thing there, shoot it, and now it's on to phase two already. It will dive at you immediately afterwards, and if you're not careful and you kind of let your guard down, it's easy to get hit by that attack without thinking about it. I've done it multiple times just because I kind of let my guard down, but overall it doesn't really affect too much. If anything, it just kind of avoids an extra hit and just kind of stalls the fight a bit more. That's pretty much it. Here, just once again, wait, and then shoot it back as it jumps back around, and just float over the, the Fire Doomer type thing. Just like before, you don't want to try inhaling those. You cannot inhale those. Those will never be inhaled. They will just do damage to you, so just float. That's another thing about this game. There's no infinite float. Technically, you keep yourself floating, but you have to kind of like keep on spitting out air pellets in order to do that. And sometimes that could kind of screw you over. I'll get into that much later. But as you can tell, we already got into phase three. Phase 3 is probably the easiest of all the phases, because if you stand in a corner, there's only one attack you even have to worry about whatsoever. And if you'll notice, only the part with the ship part inside of it takes any damage. Now, I, I must say this though, how Shay managed to program this, I have no clue, but it's still impressive. This attack here is the only one you have to worry about. Just jump up when it shoots the ele electricity down at the bottom, and that's it. You're safe. You also cannot hit it when it shoots electricity, it's also invulnerable to that. And either way, Grand Doomer is finished, that's it, all done. No more Grand Doomer. Yep, that's about it. And now we have Wispy Woods, which can either be really good or bad depending on RNG. Uh, mainly one attack with RNG could ever prove troublesome. We'll get into that in a second. First off, let's go ahead and face Wispy. First thing you want to do above all else to stay around the corner here and just start inhaling. Things are going to drop. And then just shoot it back. And then you'll see it shoot spikes to block you from the side. Run towards it as soon as it lands and as if you keep on running immediately afterwards, you'll avoid those clouds at the right moment. Wait even a split second longer and you will get hit by those air pellets. But, if you keep on repeating this, this is pretty much the entire first phase. Nothing else you really need to worry about, period. So just keep on repeating this over and over. Also, those uh, explosive apples are kind of a nice touch. Yep. Rinse and repeat. That's all there is to it. Not really much else to add to the whole thing. And I'm actually honestly surprised this phase is still going on. Whatever. It's bound to end eventually. And there we go. Phase 3. No, no, no this, is, this is still phase 2. Never mind. Phase 2. Right here, these giant apples, where they spawn depends on if you can avoid it easily or not. Uh, since they were kind of spawned close to me, I had to jump over it properly. Otherwise, sometimes you won't be able to inhale it in time, but not be able to avoid an attack. They're not the small apples like they are in regular Wispy, so uh, they're a lot harder to just float over like you can normally. They also jump a lot higher, if you notice. Look how high they jump initially. They can easily reach you with their big apple status. But either way, since they were far away that time, I could have just easily outran them, and that's exactly what I did. Now it goes into phase three, which I think is really cool, a Rainbow Curse reference here. Wispy in the sky. <laughs> And thankfully, you spawn this little thing right there that can hit twice, and you're already out of that phase immediately. At this point, it goes right back to phase one. 
and nothing crazy, not even any of those explosive apples. And that is it. I did take damage from one of the apples, or something. Oh yeah, I took damage from one of the air pellets he shot out. The ones that spread into three. Alright, no big deal. Now we're moving on to Mr. Duder. The first phase is nothing special, and I'm honestly not even sure what changed out of the first phase versus the second phase. I'm sure something changed, but honestly not all too much. The first phase is more or less the same as far as I can tell. He does a little spinny thing where he comes after you, lands back down. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. Nothing nothing really stand out-ish. It's just the same old Mr. Duder. But, as you can tell, the HP of all these bosses is extremely high. So, this phase is going to last for quite some time as well. All these bosses have at least twice the amount of, amount of HP as I could tell, as any of the bosses with the true mina of the regular Return of Dreamland, along with all their new attacks. Launch that back at him. There's not really much else to explain. In fact, while he's just doing this, I'm going to go ahead and check my recording to make sure I do hit record. And it's, yep, okay, good. Just wanted to make sure of that. Because I don't want to record this entire arena and realize I never hit the record button for my voice. Wouldn't that be annoying? That would be very annoying. Much as annoying as trying to wait for this phase to play out to move on to the phase two, where things start getting tremendously more exciting. But as you can tell, so far they have not. And there we go. Now things get a bit more interesting. He has electricity now. And... This attack kind of homes in towards you at the same time. You want to run underneath it as soon as it shoots, and then shoot it back. And then he has a Quilly, Quilly Rattler type attack where it kind of slams down, drops some stars, slams down, drops some stars. Except unlike Quilly Rider, the range of his drop is huge. You saw that splash damage there, and he moves a lot quicker, so it's kind of hard to do the whole grab some stars and shoot back at him as you could with Quilly Rider. Rattler, wow. You never want to get caught up in a corner, by the way. That's bad. You never want to get caught up in a corner of any of these bosses in this mod because the invincibility frames for getting out of damage are lowered tremendously and it could end up killing you. Here, you can inhale these. Do not use that to your advantage because otherwise those things are going to constantly spin around and chase you throughout the entire rest of the fight. One time I tried to avoid them for about 30 seconds and they were still there. So... Yeah, avoid it at all costs. I cannot, cannot stress that enough. Now we have Goriath. Oh boy, here we go. Super Saiyan Monkey. This is, yep. <sighs> this one is kind of annoying. Honestly, I think the first phase is harder than the second phase, personally. And I wouldn't say hard is more so just annoying. Trying to even get a single hit on him before he lands is another thing, because he just moves up before out of reach where he can even reach it. You can't even jump up to where he is enough to launch a star. And also, it lags right there. The first time you ever come up against uh, Goriath, it'll always lag in that shuriken attack the first time for some really stupid reason. And I cannot figure it out. But either way, it doesn't really matter. What does matter... As he slams down at you here, and that's it. Also, when he comes to his when he comes to his arms and him punching you, you do, you could duck underneath the attack, but you don't want to be next to the wall either, because the splash damage also causes it to damage you. You want to kind of be half the distance between him and the wall. That way, you could duck underneath his attack, and at the same time, also avoid damage of the splash damage. Either way, I wouldn't even bother wasting any star pellets. Just wait till he lands. And that's pretty much that. Then he goes into phase two. He's definitely a lot more nimble, but not really much less predictable. There is one attack you do need to watch out for that's kind of uh, funny. Like here, you could also duck under that attack with the same principle as the hand just underneath it. Here, though... You want to move out of the way of the icicles immediately because this guy could freeze you no matter where you're positioned. There's no avoiding that freeze. It doesn't do any damage, but you want to make sure you're not underneath the icicles by the time you get frozen. So as soon as you shoot off those beams, get in a safe position immediately or you will take damage. This attack here, all you have to do is just go to another place where you weren't before because he'll slam down and not hurt you at all unless you stay in the same position where you already were at. 
So just move. And that's pretty much it. You can also duck underneath these pretty well. Uh, I messed up here. I was supposed to get close to him in the one in front of him because that way you could avoid that little wave attack immediately. But I didn't do that. Either way, you can just duck in that little hole there, grab a star, fall back in the hole away from the land, and just shoot it back at him. Very simple phase, but it's very easy to get hit as well, as you can tell I did. But I kind of messed up myself too, but either way, I'll take this little orange right here and move on. So far, only one Max of Tomato and Tomato were fully, or orange. I'm pretty sure it's looks like an orange more than a tomato to me, but whatever. Here we have Landia. Landia isn't so bad. It would be a lot, a lot easier if you had infinite float. But the fact you don't makes this fight immensely harder. Either way, you'll notice I'm taking every opportunity I can to grab stars. Grabbing a star, launching it back at it, and then grab another star and immediately getting into another position immediately. And then also inhaling these stars too. That's because I'm trying to end the first phase as quickly as possible, because in, after you get into the steps that I do, the attacks that Landy could do are a lot more widespread and a lot harder to dodge, so we just get it out of the way immediately. With this, you want to grab the one to the side, shoot it, grab the other star, and then start running. You'll just barely avoid that dive, and that is the best way to immediately take him out. Just grab that, one more star, and now you are in phase two. Of course, it's not like phase two is any easier, quite the contrary in fact, however, not too much has changed in this section. Might shoot faster, but that's pretty much it. But here, you want to stay off the ground, but not too high either. Because there's a shockwave on the ground and where that is too. And if you stay as top, because of the limited flight, you might not be able to get to the very top in time. Also, make sure you get to the very left right afterwards because of that dive as quickly as possible. This attack... Stay away from the corner. If you get caught in the corner when Landia starts this attack, you will not escape that corner. It is basically instant death. Because of the lack of invincibility frames after you get hit, that's it. But as you can tell, we're going to make sure that after the first hit, we want to see where the flame is coming from. It's going to launch it down, and then it's going to launch it back at you, and then it's going to kick it over towards you. Just stay and note where that is afterwards, and then just wait for it to get launched back at you again, and then jump over it. It's quite simple. There are only two times you need to dodge that fireball. Here, you'll just notice this is basically the vanilla landia, but you'll notice what I'm doing. I'm inhaling and at the same time spitting out to kind of keep myself afloat. You want to make sure you keep doing that. But you could easily, like this for example, but you could easily mess up. And trust me, I do mess up in this run at some point. Not may maybe, maybe not against Landia, but definitely other bosses. You want to stay away from that flame, because it does have quite long range. Shoot it back again. And I wanted to get greedy, and that led to my downfall, as you can tell right there. Never be greedy. Now, this attack could either be this attack, or the vanilla spin attack. So, no matter what it is, the third time you see him go around in a pattern like this, stay off the ground at all times but not too high off the ground. Here, you'll see the same thing as Landia normally does, but then immediately after this, stay in the center, because once again, that fire bar attack. If you don't realize that, and you get over to the corner to try and avoid the little wave thing, thinking they're gonna be waving off to the sides back and forth, you will get hit, and that would be bad. And you will be caught in that corner, and you will lose your run right then and there. Now we have mini bosses. Honestly, these mini-bosses are hard at first to learn, and in the hard bo mini-boss rush in 5-5, five, five, is it? Some of them could be outright painful, but when the full range like this, once you learn them, they're not really too bad. I think Moundo is probably the most annoying, but... Sir Kibble? Yep, just as long as you float, you're pretty much good. There's definitely a lot of projectile spam, but Sir Kibble never also blocks, so you have multiple chances to hit him. He also has that new spin attack, so that's interesting and new to think of. Charges faster, so there's that. Just keep this up. Every so often, he'll throw that little blade at you. And he also does the final cutter, which is kind of a cool addition. 
But, like I said, not really too much crazy, not really too much change, just float. The best you can, using the method like that. And that's it for Sir Kibble. Next up, we have Moundo, who is really easy to get hit by for one attack in particular. If you're not in the right position, it's really easy to get hit. He starts off predictable enough, just kind of hitting you and slamming down at you. Sometimes you can suit it fast, but you also don't want to get to be with stars because you could also slam himself right into where you're going to be saying to inhale that, like you can see right there. But overall, nothing too crazy. Yep, just continue that. Here, you want to jump over that, and I unfortunately got too close to that corner, which messed me up. So many of us floating back, he was able to hit me with that little spark that he had. That was my downfall, but at least it was only one hit. So, yeah. You also don't want to stay in the corner here, because it's really easy to take damage in that corner, too. Pretty much, story of this game do not get caught in the corner. It's okay to stay in the corners for attacks. There's a lot of corner camping that does exist in this game, but you want to make sure you avoid the corners when it's possible and you need to. That is most very, very important. Either way, that's that. Now we have Water Galbaros, which honestly is one of the easiest mini bosses in the game, in my personal opinion. As long as you float, you're pretty much safe. And it does kind of rush you pretty quickly, but aside from that, eh. It never does any, really sh any real shockwaves when it slams down at you ever, so he also jumps really slow. I'm sure that's going to be fixed in an eventual EX inversion. Yep. In fact, it has a second phase, but the only thing I've really seen about the second phase is this right here, which you can also just kind of avoid that way. Its second phase isn't really too much different from its first phase, so... I don't see too many different attacks, but I'm sure they exist. And one more hit, and that should be it. And now we have Dubior. <sighs> I don't think the HP was adjusted for Dubior of all bosses, which is quite strange because it still only takes like five or six hits to defeat. You want to make sure that third blast you don't get hit by because it will fake you out. Kind of like uh, Solo S does. Make sure you inhale those as quickly as possible. At least get used to doing that. Make sure you always hit him as soon as he launches down there. Now first attack, just jump. Don't float because if you notice, if you try floating... He'll launch back at you from the middle there. Kind of an interesting way of adding to the attack. And if you don't inhale one of those things, it'll create an electric bar on both sides and kind of trap you in. So make sure you always inhale the little bots he shoots out immediately. Now we have Fatty Puffer, another boss that could immediately take you out in one hit if you're not careful in a corner. Surprise, surprise. I do notice, however, that in the arena, the spikes at the top right and top left, I'm not sure if they were in the story, uh, that were in the story mode, aren't there in the arena. I'm not sure if they were there normally in the main story mode, but either way, kind of forgot that you launched enemies there, kind of messed me up. And I took some damage, so not really too good of a run so far, but I can easily improve. It's only the first phase. I will say about Fatty Puffer, make sure you are always landed perfectly on the ground before you start to try and inhale and float up again. That is crucial. I don't know how many times I messed up on this boss thinking, like there for example, that I landed perfectly and was able to float up again and wasn't able to reach the top of the screen. So yes, very, very, very easy to mess up. Be careful. Now with this, you just want to kind of float up to the top here, keep on doing a little spit pellet thing, and avoid the stalactites. Stalactites? I think they're stalactites. I don't really remember anymore. Slide kicking around that attack is always helpful. And then, eventually, he's going to float up, float over to the right, 
drop down, and then it's going to immediately continue and then go around the place like this. This is what I'm saying. Make sure your feet are fully planted on the ground before you try jumping and floating again. It will mess you up if you don't really badly. You won't even know. Here, be careful. If you get caught in that corner with that jump there trying to inhale those enemies, that's it. GG. You will get hit in that corner and you will not be able to live from that point. Just take note of that. I cannot stress that. Here we have other mini bosses. Whew. One of them is took me forever to figure out properly and con to do consistently, but eventually I ended up doing it. Here we have, well, Gigant Edge. It's very easy to bait him. He also has a shield attack. He blocks a lot more, so be cautious of that. And he also charges at you with his shield as soon as he blocks, so also. Now, in the irregular true arena part of this, I kind of stood away from its blade and I kind of inhaled and I kept on inhaling the star and shooting it back at him one after the other. The range of that sword is so wide, you do not want to try risking that because uh, you're going to probably get yourself hit a lot more than if you try inhaling from as far. Not wise. Eventually, though, just make sure every time you shoot it, whether it's blocked or not, just jump. Jump immediately after you shoot it out if he hits the wall. Every time he hits the wall and he leaves a star, you can inhale that star he leaves behind, but he will most likely block it half the time. So just jump as soon as you hit it, because then he does that. You don't want to try and be risky waiting for him to unshield himself, because, well, you're going to just gonna mess yourself up pretty badly. King Do. <sighs> this just gives me back a horrible... Horrible. There, I kind of messed up because I forgot. I was waiting for you to kind of jump over me, but I realized, no, wait. You have to do this first. Every time he charges at you, he also launches a blast of air at you. Now, the second time he walks towards you, you could slide kick underneath him. But I didn't do that. And I kind of messed myself up in my pattern here, as I could tell. I'm like, huh. Well, I still don't take damage, so I guess that's what matters. Like, there, you can, float, you can jump underneath it. He alternates that like there. He can just jump over him again. Knowing how to jump over him at the right moment rather than trying to float over him is absolutely crucial to memorize for the hard run of the mini bosses in the 5-5 uh, five five, if you decide to go that route, which probably is a bad idea all around regardless. But if you wanted to give it the challenge, there you go. Whenever it launches to the side, just be careful there. After he hits ones, you don't want to be caught in that attack. That essentially is the time beam that Shay added here. It will freeze you in place, and then Waddle Duke could just King Do could just attack you immensely. And that's pretty much that. Next up, we have Bonkers. This one took a while, basically just bait the hammer, wait for him to land, shoot it back at him, watch out for the seeds, coconuts, I'm not sure what they are really, coffee beans, you can name it whatever you really want, I don't know what the official name is. First phase is relatively easy and straightforward, it's the second phase that gets annoying, right when he starts using this, slide underneath that and get used to doing that. Immediately after that, slide down, that overhead attack will hit you from above, and if you're regular floating and you don't slide kick underneath him, he'll hit you from underneath too. You need to be very quick, quick at all costs. But he has a pattern. Depending on what he uses first. If, if he uses his overhead attack first, every time he either uses the hammer flip, which is fire, or the hammer charge thing that DDD does, he'll either give, he'll either do a flip overhead, or give you, or give you a little seeds afterwards he alternates that but you have to remember what attacks he does that after like for example there should be a hammer flip here now and then he's gonna launch seeds at you which you can inhale wait for him to jump a third time launch it back at him and then slide kick underneath because if you don't once again surprise surprise you can get caught in a corner and die once again if you don't duck underneath that attack so be careful Right there, he's gonna go overhead swipe again. Did all of those without damage, baby. Take that. 
Now for the final round before Magalor, we have Metal General. I can either do really well or really bad against Metal General, it all really depends. I know it's pattern down to a science, but executing it is another thing. First off, that sword just float over it, grab the star, shoot it back, he will jump back at you. But he can just kind of stay here in the corner and avoid all laser attacks. That attack there with the electricity will never hit you in the corner, period. Don't inhale those, just float over them, kind of scoot past him. And just inhale him now, shoot him, and then jump up, because he will run in and hit you before he stops. If you're above him, he'll just stop where you are immediately anyway, so just shoot him, and then run away. And always float over him to grab the star. And that's it. And then he does his little rocket move, so just stay over here, wait for him to dive in at you. Just like that, and run, make sure you don't get hit by that. And then run once again, and you could say, is this enough, far away enough to inhale the rocket by super inhaling and stay out of its way. Once again, stay in this corner here. And then it, you can just super inhale, because he's going to shoot missiles immediately after that attack, which he does. Then jump over him, and he's going to get really obsessed with that wall for some reason, where he doesn't stay away from it for like three turns. That uh, probably needs to be fixed, but whatever. And it's, at this point, I just decided to just guard and beat with the music because this animation plays out for way too long. And just start running. And then just start doing this and beat with the music again. And then just run. Not too far. Just far enough to inhale that and shoot it back. Eventually, he's going to do that little sword thing again. Shoot him, jump over it, grab a star, and then jump up immediately because he has a laser now that can shoot just like Mecha Knight. I like that. Here, get close to him so you can inhale all those as much as you can, wait for him to stop blocking, shoot it back at him, go beneath him, grab it, shoot him again, inhale all these, shoot it back at him. I was hoping I could have entered him off there, but he just avoided the attack barely, but whatever. Jump over him again. Inhale, I hit the wrong way, that's upsetting, I could have finished you off pretty quickly, but I didn't, right here. Just jump over that as it comes in at you, go back to the corner. If you don't defeat him right at this point, things are going to get hectic really fast. That thing's going to blast down, as there's fire on the ground, he'll launch a laser at you, get out of the way as he dies, because he can explode and he can hurt you that way. But thankfully, I managed to defeat him without taking any damage. Same cannot be said about this boss here. The Lore Starcutter. The Bullet Curtain style boss that Shay made. To be honest, this is the part I was looking forward to the most in this game because I kind of love Bullet Curtains and shmups in general. So I'm excited to see what happened here. However, every shmup kind of controls slightly differently in terms of what your hitbox is and where how fast you move back and forth. So it's kind of hard to judge especially in a heat of the moment kind of thing like this. So I'm starting my best to stay in the corner. This will get too bad yet. These you want to move back and forth just avoid the ores. And just continue to hit it. And then it goes into phase two, which things get much more annoying in. Like here with this attack, um, yeah. There's a lot of things to avoid there, but I managed to get it only once. That's, that's progress. Just keep moving with this attack. It's kind of like that zero attack, which is kind of cool, but... And once again, the ores, not really too much to worry about, just move back and forth, never stay in one place for too long. And then just wait for bullet spam. Oh yeah, there it is, there's that bullet spam. Managed to get hit though, but right here, I needed only like one more hit, so it's kind of like panicking here. I did take a lot of damage in that phase there with the tornado and the blast coming in from Magalore. That's a really, really hard attack to dodge, especially if you don't use Guardian, like the little flip thing. And as yeah, if you didn't know already, this is a no Guardian run too. No Guard or no abilities, so yeah. Oh, now we have Magalore. This is where things start to get fun. Uh, I would rate this a whole of run probably like, uh, I'd say... If I was to compare the difficulty to anything, 
I'd probably say Amazing Mirror, where a couple of the base bosses are kind of annoying, but the real trouble is the final boss. Magalore took so long for me to figure out, and even then, figuring out is used in huge quotation marks. Immediately after his first couple attacks, he starts shooting this from under above you. Keeping note of when he does that is very crucial. First time is after the first three lasers he shoots at you, or right after the spike attack is when he does that. Here, it's not just some weak, stupid attack as it was before, you just stay up in this corner, constantly float around, and just dodge back over to the other side as quickly as possible. Just keep running, and if you do it properly, you may avoid damage. Here, immediately afterwards, if you see that attack, he's gonna be having to- see that? You can't just avoid that by staying behind him anymore. That- that thing right there does a lot of damage. You're going to see. Trust me, you will see how much damage it does. But, so far I'm pretty doing decent, but if you notice as well, I didn't do much of anything to him either. So, yeah. Here, I should know by now that he's gonna be doing this, and look at that. Got hit twice by the time I was trying to get out of it, and it did about half my health. After the second time he does that little portal attack with the Stumers, he shoots you immediately after from above too, and kind of homes in where you're at, so be careful of that too. Now comes the laser. Just float above immediately, keep on doing the air pellet thing like this. Keep doing that, keep doing that, and I messed up as you can tell right there, and did even more damage to myself. At this point, I was just like shaking, coming this close to an off of such a great run so far that I was felt I was gonna be messing it up very shortly. And I got him to phase two, but that health wasn't giving me very much confidence. Let me tell ya. I love this attack here, the uh, Master Crown attack, kind of like Void Termina. That was a kind of a cool addition. And then, once again, he does a laser attack. Get over to the other side as fast as you can, because you want to try to inhale those. I messed up, I was supposed to super inhale those, but I just regular inhaled only inhaled two, which wasn't enough to kind of damage him from underneath. And I managed to get myself hit by that attack too. So overall, not a very good combo, and I couldn't also damage him because he went over to the background immediately after that laser attack. So once again, not very good for me. Here, just wait for it. Comes the spikes, three spikes in a row this time. So one, shoot one, dodge out of the way, shoot the other, dodge out of the way, and that's it. And now, laser portal thing. And I still have like a third of your health to take out for Magalore. Now there's a very, very small window of opportunity to jump out of the way of that attack, which I did right there, which you'll see. And then once again, He's going to shoot from above you immediately after the attack as well. Get used to that. And get used to constantly moving in a... Well, moving in general. Right here, and hill these. I man, somehow managed to get out of the way of that, and... I managed him twice with that as well, too. Now, you'll notice when he... Before he does that attack, he kind of, like, slides over with a little blur. Where he slides over to, he's going to appear at the opposite side to hit you with. So just be careful. Either way, I do manage to take him out, so thankfully, that's that. But, there is still one other form we haven't tackled yet. You know which one that is. Crowned Magalore. But let me just grab these two tomatoes, oranges, whatever they are, and I still have two maximum tomatoes left over. Know what that means? I started with five, and I only used three of them. In the true arena of Return of Dreamland, you only had you were given three max and tomatoes. So really, I beat this with the same set of standards and requirements as the original true arena in Return to Dreamland. Take that. That gives me confidence for whenever the EX mode for this is created. Not much confidence, but any confidence is key, right? Either way. There's one spike attack which really annoys me. It's very pixel perfect to try and avoid, and clearly I did not avoid it there. You're gonna have to stand at the very right side of that uh, star there, but that's if the portal for the star is at the bottom. But either way, with this attack, you can't just hide in the corners anymore and it moves over quickly. There's a small leeway room of avoidance right there, as you can tell, 
That is a very, very quick attack. However, you could avoid Magalore by standing underneath him like that. You just run over to the other side and grab those stars. Thankfully, Magalore has not shown or shot at any Gordos at me, so that's always a plus. As long as you don't- the only attack which is annoying about this is the one that also hits the ground, in which case you have to let go of the, of the star pellets you have and wait till the next run and kind of avoids you from getting a hit. All the attacks are pretty much avoidable by just staying over to the right except for one, that one at the very beginning, which is always really annoying. Either way, just stay here, constantly inhale stuff, not really too much different from regular Magalore, just a lot faster. Once again, laser beam, just stay here. I don't even think you really have to duck, but I'm ducking anyway, just to be extra safe. You never know, I guess. I'm gonna quickly get over here, and if I didn't... I got it twice, because I didn't position myself properly that time. And now you are in phase two. This is where things start to get really interesting. First attack is very easy to dodge. Stay over to the right. Go over to the left. If this was Mag Magalore Soul, you just float up and avoid both the swords. But this isn't Magalore Soul, so don't have to worry about that. For all I know, she could even change up that as well from the game. Who knows? Either way, with this laser attack, you want to stay in the middle, see where it's coming from, and just constantly avoid. Don't go all the way to the left or to the right. Just far enough away to avoid that laser. Once you see one appear from the top, then you can float above the one that's underneath, grab the one in the middle. Whew. You have to move constantly. Uh, this is the worst attack to dodge. I could sometimes dodge the attack perfectly, and sometimes like that, I don't. It's very, very precise. Like, I could dodge it maybe 75% of the time, but most of the time I don't. This attack, don't even bother inhaling anything. Just let it let it out immediately. It's like Galactonite, but this last one you have to duck underneath. And if you have something in your mouth to kind of shoot back, well, you have to get rid of it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Stay from the corners, just get in the middle when you see that attack. I'm sure you all know that one. That one's just like from normal Magalore 2. Nothing really too crazy. And once again, he's gonna do a little laser beam attack. Same premise as before. Just stay somewhat in the middle, not all the way in the middle, just to see where the attack's coming from, and position yourself accordingly. Not too far to the left or right, until the last time you see the laser at the left, kinda go up to the top. And now comes the beam attack. If he uses it in the first one or two, you'll see two. If he uses the attack after that initial onslaught, he'll only be one. The first one's a lot easier to dodge. However, the second one, the one raised to the two are easy to dodge too, as long as you sidekick at the right times, which I didn't do in my first run of this either, but that's another story for another day. I, even though I know where to stand for that attack, I never executed it this entire run. Whatever, runs a run. Doesn't matter if you win by a, by a, a inch or a mile, winning's winning, I guess. And at this point, he just resets his move set patterns. So as long as you don't mess up, you should be fine. But this attack here is always so precise on timing. You pretty much have to jump as soon as you see him come out of the portal the final time. But at this point, this is when you can just get confident, because you, you can get a pretty good amount of free hits on him. Wait for him to move it and stop in one place. Grab him again. He's going to shoot out a laser. And that is it. That is it for Magalore. That is it for the arena. That is it for ever having to play this mod again until EX mode is eventually made, which probably won't be for a few years, because Shay needs rest. So please, do not rush them on that. Anyway, as you can tell, I beat my time by... over 2 minutes and 10 seconds, so that's a good run. Anyway, that should be it. Thank you all for watching. I hope that I kind of did better on my original 2 arena run that I did over 10 years ago, which is my first attempt at no ability runs, period. And I'm not too fond of that one, despite being the most viewed thing on my channel. Hopefully, this makes up for it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. See you guys next time.